Center here at TriMec in our uh, main office in Richmond, and I specialize in EPDM support uh, and have been doing so for the last four years or so. Uh, before that, I did all um, all SolidWorks support prior to. Uh, today we're going to try to get through a significant about amount of information about um, the the way we manage database files, understanding database files, um, and some of the tools involved with SQL Server. Uh, we'll go through a disk setup example to optimize performance and uh, talk about some of the general best practices for a healthy SQL Server environment. Uh, at the end, we'll also talk about where to find additional information when you're troubleshooting, and hopefully you'll, uh, you'll get quite a bit out of this. So we'll start with looking at the uh, supported operating systems and um, some of the absolute minimums that you want when you're setting up your SQL Server. Um, I'm working with version 2015 of Enterprise PDM and I have installed uh, SQL Server 2014. So all the screenshots and everything that you see um, from my machine is going to be under that setup. Uh, I'm currently running Windows 7. I don't have a production environment so I can run everything all inclusive uh, on my one little little workstation. But these are the operating systems that are currently su supported for versions 2013 through 2015 of the Enterprise PDM. Uh, which SQL, SQL Server platforms as well, and the absolute minimum amount of RAM and disk space that you would want for those kinds of, uh, for this server install. All right, so when you install um, SQL Server, uh, you'll find that there is an option for a default instance and a named instance. Uh, ideally, when you install SQL Server, uh, it'll be on a dedicated system with no unrelated applications, just because SQL is a bit of a resource hog. So you want it to have um, as much available uh, resources as possible to support your production environment with Enterprise PDM. Um, but when it comes to your named instance versus your default instance, um, I generally install, uh, when I'm working in my own workstation, of course, with a default instance. But uh, if you've got a situation where a SQL Server is being used by multiple applications, you may have a named instance set up. An instance just hosts your databases. Um, an e EPDM database service can only connect to one instance at a time. That's worth noting. Um, and each, each instance is basically a separate SQL Server process. And it's listening on its own unique uh, TCP port. Um, and uh, generally, default is the way to go if you can go that way. Uh, there are several services involved with SQL Server uh, that are installed by default. Uh, I'm only going to point out two uh, because they they become relevant <laughs> when you're uh, when you're managing things related to enterprise PDM. First is the SQL Server agent. Uh, if you're ever having trouble with your backups or maintenance plans in SQL Server Management Studio, which we'll look at a little bit down the road, uh, the SQL Server agent may be having trouble. Uh, that's a service you want to be aware of, and it has its own set of logs if you need to look up um, any any kind of issues. Also is the SQL Server database engine. Uh, that, when you are installing SQL, is where you set everything to mixed mode authentication. And all that means is that when you're logging into SQL Server Management Studio, you have the option of using the uh, system administrator, affectionately known as the SA uh, credentials, or a uh, Windows administrator using Windows authentication on the server machine. Uh, mixed mode authentication is um, it's, it's highly recommended uh, for EPDM. Um, it almost is a, is a requisite. I, I would not go, uh, go one way or the other. I would definitely go with mixed mode. Some people lose their SA account uh, or it gets locked out or they have other issues where it's absolutely uh, necessary to be able to get into the management studio with a Windows login. And it becomes quite a bear, it can be, <laughs> to get around that if you don't have that mixed mode set up. Um, control panel administrative tools services. That's where you can find uh, your list of SQL services. Like I said, there are quite a few installed. Um, and you'll be able to see the logon properties, which are spelled out in the EPM installation log on how to set those up or how, what to choose when you're doing your install. Uh, the main one, of course, is MS SQL Server. And you can see that when I took the screenshot from my machine. I also had the archive server service running, the database server service running, and we won't talk about that little guy there. All right, 
So also outside of uh, just the general control panel look at services, you also have the SQL Server Configuration Manager which you'll get to from your start menu. You may never need to launch that, but if you wanted a second look, a secondary look at your services in a purely SQL environment, that manager is there for you to see what's going on with your services. And then of course there's a SQL Server Management Studio and we'll spend some time in there today. Okay, there are different types of database files inside of SQL Server related to your vault. You're going to have an MDF file, which is your data file. That's the file that stores data. <laughs> your LDF transaction log, which um, stores information about the different transactions that are going on in your vault. Um, the transaction log gets a bit of a bad rap because it, it has the ability to grow completely out of control and <laughs> consume tons of hard drive space. Um, that really is only when you have uh, certain settings um, set up against our recommendations and I'll show you all that in a second. There's also a temp um, database that also has its own uh, log file and data file. Uh, this just manages temporary tables, sort tables, and other objects and it just needs, needs tons of space. That's why when we talk about SQL Server and having a dedicated environment we want to make sure it's uh, fully capable of handling everything that EPDM needs to, uh, to perform well for you. Um, each database has a recovery model option. Uh, by default, it's set if you're backing up your databases regularly, then this recovery model option uh, won't be a hindrance at all if something catastrophic should happen. Uh, auto growth versus restricted size maximum. This is probably a good time just to go straight into, uh, into the management studio and, and take a quick look. So as you can see, I'm launching SQL Server 2014 and I've got my mixed mode authentication. So here's my SQL Server option here and my Windows authentication option if I need to. There I am as my domain user <clears throat> and here I am as the SA account. So I'm logged in there and we can take a look. Here is your temp database. It's going to be located under system databases along with your general default master model and so on and so forth and it's going to be located right here. Again that's where it's storing temporary information. Sometimes that's used heavily during upgrades and such. You just want to make sure you have plenty of space for those kinds of things to grow. Alright, when we talk about um, recovery model, uh, this is my most heavily used test vault. Um, when I come in here under the properties I can see that I've got my, <laughs> my MDF file, which again is a data file, and my LDF file, which is the transaction log. Now these right here are the auto growth uh, default settings. Uh, this allows it to grow by this kind of increment to an unlimited size for the uh, data file. And then for the log file, it can grow by this amount uh, and it's limited to a certain certain um, maximum size. Now when I get here under options is where my recovery model is. Now by default it's going to be under full. We like to see it under simple. It just makes things a little bit more um, easy to manage as far as disk space and all that kind of good stuff. Again, if you're, if you're making regular backups of your databases, having this set to full isn't really necessary because if you have some kind of failure, you can always restore your full backup that you're making. So the recovery model can stay to simple and make things perform a little bit better on your server. All right, so we touched on auto growth and, res and restricted size. Let's head on back. 
All right. Last uh, is the index, just something to be mindful of when it comes to your database. Uh, it's going to improve speed of reading from your database when it's designed properly. So we kind of discourage people from uh, doing their own manual indexing. There's a maintenance task that you can set up for EPDM that will, um, or for SQL Server that will um, index your, your vault for you and uh, do it on a scheduled maintenance plan and uh, keep you from having any issues with data corruption or, or inadvertently causing performance problems. All right, so I talked about the transaction log and the fact that it kind of gets a bad rap. Uh, you have the ability to shrink it if it does grow out of control, and there are some scenarios in which EPDM servers will throw errors that specifically tell you that the tra transaction log is out of whack and you need to do something. Uh, if that should happen, uh, just where we just were in the SQL Server Management Studio, you can launch, you can launch um, the task information for your uh, for your database or launch a task by right clicking, going to tasks, and then you have the ability right there to shrink your log file as needed. That will recover space um, and, and make things uh, a lot better in your SQL environment. All right, next we'll look into disk configuration considerations. If you're setting up EPDM for the first time or you're about to move servers or something along those lines, um, you can consider uh, separating the locations of those log files. I showed you uh, in the database management studio or in the SQL management studio where you could um, access the log file, the log file and the um, data file uh, growth options for auto grows and maximum size, uh, it also had a location there of where those files are being saved. Um, you can consider saving them to a different part of the disk, to a different partition or something along those lines if you're trying to, uh, to improve performance. And just how data is accessed for those different files uh, can make an interesting uh, an interesting setup uh, for for performance. So uh, if you have the ability and disk space and the setup to to move those around and uh, and kind of protect them in a location that's that's got plenty of room for growth, you want to do that. So one example would be uh, what we've got shown there before. We're splitting up things on RAID one versus RAID five versus RAID ten. Um, please understand. I am not an IT pro or a, uh, a trained uh, database administrator. So everything that I know is from, uh, from experience, from documentation, from working in the field and working with the EPDM product. So for some of you guys, IT guys out there, uh, your int intricate and intimate knowledge of the server setup will um, allow you to take an example like that and really put it to good use. Um, you'll notice when we work in technical support that I try not to give a lot of specific IT advice on how you set up your network or how you set up your server. I can tell you what your minimums are, what's worked good in other environments, but ultimately it's going to be up to you to make these kinds of decisions. This is just, uh, just some food for thought. All right. When it comes to maintenance plans and recommended tasks for general server health on your SQL Server, you want to run a daily backup of your databases. Every night it should be running that backup. Uh, that can be done through a maintenance plan. Typically when we do implementations, uh, when you have a TriMac um, application engineer come in or remotely install SQL Server for you and install your, uh, your vault and get you uh, initially up and running, they will set up a maintenance task for this. And the way it works is it backs up uh, nightly and then they'll attach a cleanup task to it that will purge anything older than say four weeks or something like that. If you, uh, once you can verify that your backups are running well and that it's keeping the data and it's a reasonable size and it's working for you, you can change that from four weeks to two weeks or something like that, whatever works best in your environment. But you definitely want to run those backups on a very regular basis. On a weekly basis, you want to look at things like uh, reorganizing and rebuilding indexes reviewing your file sizes of those the data file and log file for your databases and checking for disk fragmentation. Okay, These are the kinds of maintenance plans that are going to be appropriate for enterprise PDM. Um, the 
the organizing and rebuilding is just ensuring that data is going to be found efficiently. Uh, and depending on how much fragmentation you might find, uh, it might be a perfect time to uh, to throw to manually execute those tasks if you find that something is out of whack. Uh, we also have a, a SQL query if you if you want that I can send you that you can run, and it actually. Uh, looks through your, your vault database and can tell you if some type of action is needed there if you're not currently running the, uh, the weekly maintenance plan to rebuild and reorganize and work on indexes for you. On a quarterly basis, you want to look at your backup strategy, uh, not just on SQL Server to make sure your databases are intact, your backup databases, but also on the archive server and make sure that full backup of your 0 through F um, sorting folders in the hexadecimal uh, setup are all where they should be and that those uh, backups are running properly. You also want to, you know, if, if time and resources permit, restore one of those backups on a test setup and make sure uh, not only are they running but they're, they're, they're working and that if you get in a bind and need to restore one, uh, you've got a, a good process in place and that your data's got, got uh, integrity. All right, so a sample maintenance task Here's what it looks like. As I mentioned before, you've got your backup database task, and then you've got your maintenance cleanup task that chases it. Uh, reorganizing indexes, rebuilding indexes, also updating statistics is another one you can tack on to the end. Uh, and for anyone who wants, you can contact me. I've got a little PDF that comes from, uh, from SolidWorks Corporate that covers when and why and how to set up the uh, reorganizing and rebuilding and update st statistics uh, for, your, uh, for your vault if, the, if it needs. And that might not be something you need up front. If you're a new EPDM customer and you're just getting information in there and everything's running smoothly, that's all well and good. You may not need the, uh, the second level of maintenance plans at this time, but as you are quarterly reviewing your setup and, and checking into things and things are just you know, growing on your SQL Server, you've got tons of data, maybe data migration or different things that are happening, you've gone through several upgrades, when you start looking at that kind of situation and maybe the vault begins to slow down some, that's when you definitely want to make sure that your maintenance plans are intact. There are also error logs and reports and performance monitors and different things that you can use to keep tabs on what's going on in your SQL Server environment. There's always the Windows application event log uh, from the event viewer. You can get to that from uh, control panel uh, administrative tools. And it will tell you uh, things that are specifically wrong with the uh, or the errors that the services are throwing. So you'll find stuff in there from SOLIDWORKS Enterprise PDM database server service, from MS SQL server service. If it's having any trouble authenticating, if it, if it uh, is having major issues with the SA account, anything like that will be there. Um, but SQL Server Management Studio also has its own logs for you to look at. Uh, there's a SQL Server log, a uh, SQL Server agent log. Remember, that's the one, that's the service that's associated with backups and scheduled tasks and such. There's an activity monitor, and then there's a database uh, size information that you can get, and that I definitely want to show you. All right, so we're back here looking at my database properties. Uh, let me back out of that and go all the way back into SQL Server Management Studio. All right, so here we are. Um, we've got our management area where the maintenance plans are located. Okay, any maintenance plans that you have, you can pop it open at any time and take a look at what's going on. So this is the one I showed you the screenshot of. Notice here I've got my maintenance cleanup task. I can edit it. Right now I've got it set to purge anything that's been sitting around for more than four weeks. Uh, not just anything, but <laughs> the, uh, the uh, backup uh, tasks, the backup files that are created by my uh, backup task those file extensions in that specific location are the things that are going to be that are going to be purged. All right. So we also see here we've got our SQL Server logs. Pop one of those open. You'll see right here I've got some major login failures. Now I actually know what that's for, so I guess I might as well explain that. Um, my environment it really isn't a hot mess. This right here is a um, a uh, vault that I brought over from another server uh, and I never restored the um, the archives. Uh, so <laughs> so I, I can't make a, uh, a local vault view at this point uh, and it's, it's keep, it keeps throwing errors because it's looking for something that it can't find. 
So if you, uh, you ever do something like that uh, and you're wondering why it's not working, you can see <laughs> that you'll get a, some indication of a problem here in your general SQL Server logs. And that's just located under the management arm of the tree here. Then there's also the SQL Server agent. It's got its own set of, of logs as well that you can access from here. If, you, uh, if you're having any trouble with your maintenance plans, and I've seen that plenty of times where people have it set to run on schedule, but it doesn't seem to be running on schedule, it may be a problem with this service, and you can look here to see if this service is having issues. Another good thing to know about maintenance plans is you don't have to wait for the, um, for the schedule to run in order to, to test it out. Uh, you can execute it on the fly which I'm not going to do because I have all those things, all those tasks built in there and I don't want to hold anything up, but you can execute it on the fly. Uh, that's always nice if your backups haven't been running and you just fixed something, you want to execute a backup right away. So you can do that from here via your maintenance plan or you always have the ability to make a backup directly from your vault here under tasks and backup. That's also where you would restore a backup as needed. Okay, so I also mentioned the activity monitor, which is available from here. That's going to take a second to load, but I'll go ahead and let it load. Um, what I like about this one is if you happen to have one user that's running something that's causing everything to drop out for your entire user base, you can find that here. Uh, under processes, there's a guy over here called head blocker. And any user that has done something that's locked everything up will be listed here. So you'll know which computer, which login is causing that issue. And then you can go specifically there and troubleshoot. Now, it might not be that that particular user has done, some, has, you know, done something malicious, <laughs> but it could, be, it could be an indicator of a, of a bigger problem. They're uh, checking in a huge assembly or trying to check out one or, or trying to make some kind of uh, some kind of uh, you know, heavy operation and their their interaction with SQL has just gone bad. You can get that kind of information from here. All right, and I also mentioned the database size from standard reports. Uh, we talked about things not getting out of hand and growing to the point where uh, you don't have enough disk space to operate. You can get information like that from the um, reports related to a specific database. In the general standard reports, you can see there's plenty of stuff to look at. I'm going to focus here on disk usage, and it's going to give me a nice view of my main vault here, what's going on with how much space I have reserved for it to grow, um, and how much, ha how much it's actually taking up at this particular time with data. So as you can see, I'm in a pretty good spot here with this um, database relative to uh, the size of my little quote-unquote server here and what's taking place. So here's how much space has been used. Here's how much space has been reserved. I've got some room to grow. I'm not growing at a lightning speed here. And you see it, it goes, uh, it's talking specifically about my data file, uh, not my transaction log in this case. And it reiterates where that's located. Yeah, and that's the default location. It's way underneath uh, <laughs> SQL Server and, and uh, several several uh, folders beneath there. And that's just where it goes by default. You have control over that when you uh, when you um, when you create your database or when you restore a database. All right. So we'll head back in here. Uh, there are a few other performance monitors that you can uh, use if you have concerns about how your vault is coming along. If you've done the standard stuff that I've already mentioned and you're still seeing weird behavior and IT has, has exonerated the network for whatever reason and you just, you know, just really don't know what's at the root of any problems that you're seeing, uh, there's a performance monitor inside of SQL Server, uh, inside of the profiler where you can run different traces on different kind of a multitude of, of counters and things that it can can check for you to give you a picture of um, of how of, of how your performance is uh, is being hindered by different uh, different activities um, there's also the SQL server performance dashboard that's available from Microsoft now these two things right here are not things you really want to go alone um, it's something that if, if you really feel you need that level 
of, uh, of monitoring or you need that level of, of diving into your SQL Server to find out what's going on, you definitely want to get help from your, um, your reseller. Um, most of you probably are our customers, which would be great. So you, you give us a call and I probably would, um, would hook up with one of the, um, the database gurus at SolidWorks Corporate uh, in order to get a, a much closer look at what's going on in your server and help you to understand the best move forward for getting optimal performance. All right, so the question is, where can you find information uh, if you think something is, has gone awry or if you just want to have a better understanding of how SQL is set up and how it's functioning? You've got the EPDM installation guide. Um, if you haven't looked at that uh, since your installation, <laughs> uh, it, does, uh, it does get uh, reviewed and, and revamped a tiny bit. Uh, with every new release, so there's there may be information in there now that wasn't in there when you installed, say, in 2012 or what have you. Um, it also covers things like the new uh, SQL Server platform and how to install there or how to upgrade, say, from SQL Server 2008 or 2008 R2 to SQL Server 2014. You'll find information like that in there, and it, there's an installation guide on every um, client install um, just located uh, on your hard drive under C drive, uh, you know, um, programs, SOLIDWORKS Enterprise PDM in uh, one of the data folders. You'll find it. Um, there's also the SOLIDWORKS Knowledge Base, which you can access from the customer portal. Any kind of uh, weird pop-ups or error messages, you can always look up in there. Uh, there's always your, your VAR, your value-added reseller. Um, hopefully they'll have an EPDM uh, specialist that's uh, seen what you are experiencing can offer some good insight. And then there's also the Microsoft support site, because ultimately SQL Server is a Microsoft product, and uh, they're going to have a lot of information in there for your IT pros uh, that will really dive in to um, the next level <laughs> of, uh, of working with that, uh, that tool. All right, so to recap what we talked about, Obviously, a very high level. I'm not going to go through all the details, but we looked at some of the services and tools that are installed with SQL Server. Uh, got familiar with the database files. That's basically the MDF and the LDF, and different ways to manage them. Make sure they don't grow out of control and cause you problems. Uh, we talked very briefly about the disk setup uh, that would optimize performance, about moving things around as you need to, making sure that you have plenty of disk space and uh, the right available amount of RAM, and that you give SQL all the resources that it needs to perform properly. We talked a bit about the best practices uh, as far as maintenance plans and making sure that you're constantly checking in on, on your vault to make sure that uh, you can recover if anything catastrophic should happen. And then lastly, where to find additional information if you're troubleshooting certain behavior. So those are all the pieces of the puzzle uh, for SQL Server setting recommendations. And uh, I guess now at this point we'll look at questions that you guys may have. At this point, I'm relying heavily on uh, <laughs> on uh, data. <laughs> All right, you ready for the first one? Yeah, I'm ready. All right. So David David is asking, how often would you upgrade SQL Server? Ah, uh, how often? Um, I would <laughs> I honestly would only upgrade it um, when it is no longer supported or right before, of course. So like uh, the only reason I updated from SQL Server 2008 R2 to SQL Server 2014 is because I had to reform my, reformat my machine and I figured if I already had to install it fresh, I might as well install the new one and that'll be good for three, four, maybe even five more releases of APDM and I won't have to do it again. Um, now, the other thing is I don't run a production environment. So if, if you guys uh, are experiencing any issues or there's any kind of feature associated with SQL Server beyond EPDM that you might need, then I would see that as a reason to upgrade. Uh, but you do want to stay ahead of the game. I've seen situations where um, someone was running SQL Server uh, 2008, um, not 2008 R2, and then uh, they, they didn't realize that there were so many new versions of SQL out there and they didn't upgrade when uh, when 2015 was installed and those are not documented as supported to run together and that you know they were able to install and they were running but they weren't happy it was weird things happening so you you want to stay ahead of the game so you know maybe every two to three years 
I guess to come kind of come around and answer your question, <laughs> maybe every two to three years as needed. All right, are there any other questions out there? And just so you all know, this webinar, as well as all of our other webinars, are on our um, YouTube channel, and you can access them through our web page, trimexsolutions.com, at the upper right-hand corner there. So in case you want to look back and see what was going on. All right, guys. Well, I appreciate your attention, and thank you, Dana, for uh, moderating today. If you guys need anything, you know you can uh, contact us at support at trimec.com. Uh, any questions you have about the, uh, the content that you saw today or uh, any additional questions that may pop up later, feel free to send those in. I'll be glad to... Um, to uh, give you my opinion or uh, research your question and, and come back with some options for you. Um, thanks again. All right. Thanks, guys. Have a great rest of your day. Bye-bye.